SyncThing is a free software that allows you to connect multiple devices and synchronize one or more folders. There is no cloud here, the devices are in constant sync, and of course you need internet for that. But of course, if you are disconnected at a moment and you do something to a file, the next time you connect, that file will be updated on the other devices. And talking about internet, SyncThing has a very interesting feature. For example, I always bring my laptop to the office, I also have here another computer, and of course my phone, and when they are in the same Wi-Fi network, the local network, SyncThing detects that and shares files using the local network, it doesn't use the internet, so it's much faster. SyncThing is available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Android. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you how to set it up. But if you plan to use it with Obsidian, stay to the end because there are some tips that I have to share with you. So let's go. This page has the links to download uh, Windows and Mac OS applications. You'll find the Android app in the Play Store. And down here, you have a lot of <laughs> more geeky things that you can use. You can also click here, Community Contributions, to find other options to download. If you're using a Mac, go to the menu bar and you'll find the Sync Think icon there. Click it and then click on Open. I'm sorry, I don't know where it will be on a Windows computer or a Linux because I don't have those here, but I think you, <laughs> you'll figure out because it's going to be in, in the same place other uh, apps uh, like this uh, are placed. At the right hand side, you can read this device and this is this device. It's the one we are using. At the left hand side, the folders you are sharing. There is a default folder, we'll get there. For now, let's start by adding a new folder so you can understand how this works. Folder ID is where you type the name of the folder you want to synchronize. You can give it a name, and below that, folder path is the address where the folder is in your folder structure. To avoid future confusion, I'm using the same name for both. And as you can see here, when I start typing obsidian slash YouTube, the uh, thing thing is already uh, filling the folder path with the same address. You can have different names here. I just don't think it's a good idea, especially if you are going to synchronize multiple folders. I think this is the, the most intuitive way to know which folder is which, because when you save this, all you see in front of you is the name, uh, the, the folder ID. To see the address, you have to open the, the, the box. But it's up to you, it's just a, a naming thing. Okay, now let's use the default folder here as an example of how to remove, disconnect a folder from sync thing. Click on the folder, then add it, and finally remove. This will disconnect that folder from the synchronization. It, it, it's now just a regular folder in your computer. Okay, now that this computer is connected to sync thing, we have to do the same thing on the other computer. So download the software there and go through the same steps. If you plan to synchronize a mobile device, you have to go to the Play Store, download the sync thing app, and do the same thing there install it and set up a folder. Now we have to connect the devices. This happens using a device ID. If you go to your computer uh, on Actions, you see the option Show ID. On a mobile device, you have to tap the hamburger icon, the one with the three lines, and then you have the Show Device ID. Okay, time to have that conversation about subscribing to the channel. More than half of you who come back to watch the videos are not subscribed. And if you are coming back to watch other videos, please subscribe. It helps a lot. 
Okay, let's go back to the video. Don't share this number with anyone unless, of course, you want that person to have access to your device. And this is another interesting use case. For example, you can set one or more folders to share them with a friend, a family member, a team member. All that person has to do is install a sync thing and follow these steps. But of course, to connect the two devices, you need to know the ID. So go to add remote device and add the device ID, the other computer's ID to the device ID box. As you can see here, there's already a device ID being suggested. This is happening because my other computer is in the same network and it has a uh, same thing running. So uh, I know that this is my other computer because I checked the key on the other computer, the device ID on the other computer. If I didn't know that, or if I want to make sure that I'm choosing the same computer, I can type the device ID. In my case, I selected this number. Now there's a new dialog box in the other computer, new device. You can add that device or ignore it. Of course, in this case, we have to add it. Time to share our first folder. Click the folder and then click Edit. And inside Edit, choose the Sharing tab. Choose the computer you want to share the folder with. And again, the other computer will get a pop-up message uh, uh, asking for permission to share that folder. And now both computers have access to this folder and all the files will be synchronized. This is a very basic setup that you can use to get started, but don't worry, there will be many more videos about SyncThing in the future, so make sure to subscribe. For now, let's talk about using it with Obsidian. Setting it up is as simple as clicking on the vault and then on the three dots to know where your vault is, the folder where it is, assuming you don't already know that. Then synchronize that folder with the other computer. On the other computer, go to Obsidian, click on the vault icon, but now select the option open folder as vault and select the folder you are synchronizing using SyncThing. The most important tip here is to remember that Obsidian is not in charge of the synchronization. You are. You are synchronizing the folders that contain the Obsidian data. So let's imagine the following scenario. You, for some reason, have two computers or two devices that are not connected to the internet. Imagine if you change the same node in both and then connect them to the internet. You create a conflict. So be very careful, be mindful of what you are doing with your nodes. If you do that, it's okay. The synchronization works very well. It's not as smooth as Obsidian Sync. I pay for Obsidian Sync and I can notice it's the slightest delay, not on the synchronization of the files, but on the settings, on the plugins. The tests I did here changing settings on my Mac and waiting them to be changed automatically on my Android took a while. Uh, sometimes it didn't even happen. I had to shut down the app and, and, and open it again and, and then the settings were changed. To so try to avoid some of these problems, what I'm doing here is using my Mac Mini as a server. I talked about setting it up on this other video here. So everything's synchronized to that Mac Mini and that Mac Mini is always on. So I'm, I always have some point in my network of computers connected to SyncThing that is up to date. And since I pay for Obsidian Sync, I moved one of my vaults to the SyncThing structure and I'll keep you posted. Okay, if this video was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and if you want to help even more, please consider joining my Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. Thanks for watching. See you soon.